Hi, this is Mike with Lacey Metal Design. Goes Old Sarge on the uh, forums. And uh, this is just a quick overview of my coalescing uh, water filter for my air compressor. Um, just last week I was able to locate this, uh, this second 80 gallon tank on Craigslist, which just by sheer coincidence uh, is the same exact tank that's uh, on my compressor. Uh, the only thing I could think of is uh, talking with the previous owner, just lack of maintenance uh, resulted in the early death of his uh, compressor motor. Uh, so I lucked out for $100, got another 80-gallon tank. So before I get started, just want to want to do a little disclaimer here. If you are not really confident in your welding skills, uh, it's better to just uh, buy something commercial. Uh, this could result in some serious injury or death. Um, so, you know, let your, your welding skills be your guide. If you have any doubts whatsoever, uh, don't, don't attempt this. Okay, just a really quick overview. This is how I get my clean, dry air over my hypertherm plasma cutter. Um, I come off the uh, cylinder head of, of the two-stage compressor with a half-inch pipe nipple and convert that over to half-inch copper flex tubing. And that comes over and into a air conditioning condenser coil out of a mid-80s um, Suburban. Okay, air comes in in the inlet side about, a, about 180 degrees, 190 degrees off of that cylinder head, exits out the back, and uh, it's about ambient air temperature by that time. This really scrubs the heat off. Um, and then it enters this first coalescing filter and I, you can see I moved my, uh, my, my uh, pressure valve uh, that turns off the air compressor down here. And the reason for that is uh, uh, when your air compressor turns off, all the hot moist air that's in the cylinder head in that line drains down into your storage tank. So moving it here um, doesn't change the, the, the pressure that it turns off. It just, uh, everything that's inside that cylinder head and in the line just drains into this filter then have a valve at the bottom that I could throw and plumbed into my sink so you know once or twice a day depending on how busy I am um, I'll drain this filter out okay off the top this uh, copper line comes out goes over into one more uh, water filter with an automatic drain and goes into the first storage tank at that point I have fairly dry air after uh, one or two days of uh, pretty heavy cutting uh, when I drain off the bottom there, I'll get maybe an ounce of water. Um, so, pretty good. Pretty good. So, I'm trying to step it up here, and what I've done is I, I, uh, I came off the first tank with three-quarter inch copper. Put this all together. This comes up into uh, the first chamber of the coalescing fi uh, uh, filter. And this is a an 18-inch... Pipe nipple that comes through the top quarter inch quarter inch wall comes down nearly to the bottom I think 18 inches is right there and it has a pipe cap on it the pipe cap is drilled on the end so that no water could lay in there and then the bottom two or three inches are is cross drilled 90 degree offset with uh, 3 8 inch holes and what that basically does is it forces the air to come down to the bottom of this chamber before it could escape and the reason for that is that chamber is filled with this stainless steel scrubby pads not really tight you don't want to restrict your airflow but you know fairly firmly packed up through there so that the, the water has all that surface area to uh, to coalesce onto and then drop back down so then as the, as the air works its way up through there, comes back out the top, drops back down to the bottom of this second chamber. And I have two drain valves here for the chambers. And then this second chamber is also filled with a, uh, the stainless steel scrubbies. Really inexpensive. Get a box full of them at uh, uh, Home Depot. And uh, this idea is based off of a design that Plain Old Bill came up with. And... Uh, his is a single chamber. I decided to go double chambered, mostly because of what I had on hand and because I wanted to force that air through their own separate chambers, uh, picking up efficiency as you go along. 
At least that's the way I think it happens. That's going to make my story, and I'll stick to it. So anyway, the air comes uh, back up through the top of the second chamber, exits three-quarter inch pipe here, and then finally works its way down and into the second 80-gallon tank. Then, um, of course, it exits out, out the side and goes to my shop air. The cut cutoff valve there. Uh, 100 and 160 um, gallons of, uh, of air storage here. And um, I think at 125 PSI, 80 gallons is 150 some odd cubic feet of air. So over 300 cubic feet of air stuffed in there. Um, I had one little weeper on the right hand chamber that I had to grind down and re-weld. And then two, um, two joints that uh, I actually just forgot to tighten down. So I went back to tighten those down. And so far I've had air pressure in it. Uh, for about eight hours now with uh, no discernible drop on the gauge anyway. Uh, so I'll make sure it's aired up before I leave and uh, check it again in the morning. But I think I've got all of the, uh, did the soapy water on all the joints and everything. It's really tight. So I'll be cutting pretty heavily throughout the weekend and uh, I'll be running the table a lot. And um, I will report back next week sometime on uh, what I see coming out as, when I drain the first tank, the second tank, and these filters to see uh, what kind of a job it's doing on uh, coalescing all that moisture out of there. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them on the, on the video, on the comment section there, or uh, contact me out on Plasma Spider. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. And thanks for watching.